Welcome back, riders. You know why I always do this intro the same way? I always start by welcoming you. I point at the camera. I'm trying to get your attention, right? Then, after I've gotten your attention, I tell you exactly what you're going to learn today. And then we have the cool intro. That part that happens before the music starts today is called a lead. And today, we are going to be talking about leads in this video. Let's check it out. Okay, so you are going to follow along on your example of 13 and a half as I read the lead for 13 and a half by Rachel Vale. And I wouldn't necessarily say that this is all of the lead. Sometimes it can be hard when we have a story like this where there aren't clear scenes and it just kind of runs together, deciding well, where does the lead stop? I think for sure that when we get to the house, that it's a change in setting. We were, in, we were outside the house and then we went to inside the house. So in my opinion, that is where the lead stops. Okay, follow along. All I knew about Ashley before I went over there yesterday was that until this year, she went to private school and now she sits next to me in math. But she asked me over and since I couldn't think of a good no, I said okay. Ashley lives near school, so we walked. We didn't have a lot to talk about on the way, but she didn't seem to mind. She was telling me that when she grows up, she wants to be a veterinarian and a movie star and travel all over the world very glamorously and live life to the hilt. She asked me if I like to live life to the hilt. Mm, I mostly just hang around, I admitted. But when you get older and you can do anything, she whispered as we began climbing the steep steps up to her huge stone house, what do you like to imagine? I was a little winded from the steps, so I just shrugged. Like, I am constantly imagining I can fly, said Ashley, spreading her arms wide. Do you ever imagine you're flying? I stopped for breath. Uh, sometimes I imagine I'm in a bakery. Okay, so notice here that the first two paragraphs are missing what? dialogue. In place of dialogue, we have some summary of a couple conversations. We have the setting that's introduced. We start the plot where they're walking to Ashley's house and we get a feel for what our main character is like, that she's nice and that she actually agrees to go. We find out a little bit about Ashley, not our main character. We find out a little bit of Ashley as far as her describing what she wants to be when she grows up. And after we're done with that, after we've kind of got into the world of the story quickly, now we have dialogue. So get into the world of the story, then have some dialogue, but the dialogue is not wasted. The dialogue tells us so much about our main character. She goes, I mostly just hang around, I admitted. Short to the point. The only other time that she talks here in this beginning of this lead, she goes, I stop for breath. I sometimes imagine I'm a in a bakery. Short, to the point. This is what our main character is like. They are short and to the point. We compare that to Ashley, and the dialogue tells us a lot about Ashley as well. She says, but when you get older and you can do anything, she whispered, what do you like to imagine? The next one is, like, I'm constantly imagining I can fly, spreading her arms wide. Do you ever imagine you're flying? So she's not just getting to the point. That's not what Ashley's like. She could just say, what do you imagine that you're going to be when you're older? But that doesn't fit Ashley's character. Instead of just getting to the point and saying, what do you ever imagine doing? She says, I imagine I'm constantly flying. Do you ever imagine that you're constantly flying? We get this idea of this girl that wants to talk a lot and has these ideas in her mind and is maybe a gentle soul, which ends up setting up the bird dying later in the story and how she's going to react to it. 
So understand, in this beginning part, it's very purposeful what the, the writer is doing here. So right now on the screen, you're gonna take a look at some of those things that I really think are important that we should take away from this lead. All right, so while I am explaining these techniques to you, make sure you copy down the sections of this that are missing on your paper so that I know that you actually got this far in the video. Uh, so the things to take away from it are number one, that sometimes stories begin with small action uh, as they're setting everything up. Um, for example, when they're leading up the steps to Ashley's house. Next, maybe the story begins by conveying a mood and focuses on that like in our first two paragraphs today and then only after that does the sequence of actions begin. Also, time and place can slowly be revealed. It doesn't have to just be you tell them exactly where they're at. And we then get to see that through the character. Finally, and probably the most important one, is that we can foreshadow what the theme or the idea or lesson learned is going to be by including specific dialogue, inner thinking, or actions. Like we see from Ashley in the very first paragraph, she mentions the idea of not wanting to say no, setting up the idea that mm, something weird could happen and she's maybe gonna learn something from this. Okay, writers, let's recap what we learned. So we saw that setting is a great thing to introduce in the beginning, introduce things about our characters, introduce where the plot is going. We saw that it's not necessary to have tons of every kind of writing there is, every kind of writing meaning. We don't have to have tons of inner thinking, dialogue, action, description, details, all that kind of stuff. There might be one that there's less of because we felt it wasn't necessary. We wanted to create a specific mood. And that's what this story did, 13 and a half. So in your assignment today, you're gonna to make sure you copy over a previous lead that you wrote. You might have one or two. So just choose one of them that you're gonna put above. That way I can easily see when I look at it, oh, they purposely did things different in the second lead. I don't want your second lead looking exactly the same. While it's tempting to look up at the top one, I suggest you keep your eyes on that box that you're writing your new lead in. I suggest you also read back through your old lead and go, hmm, there wasn't much dialogue in the previous attempt at writing a lead. That means maybe this time I'm gonna try with a lot of dialogue and see how it sounds. You might just find that that kind of uh, lead is not gonna be successful for you and that'll be worth it. Okay, writers, I've talked enough and I want you to get started with your writing because that's more important. Until I see you next time, happy writing.